Hey traders, welcome back to another episode of Market Analysis on surfing the S&P 500, NASDAQ and other indices. We have a daily chart of the S&P 500 that basically looks like this. Today is August 11th and we're looking at the week back of what happened. And you know, this is what an hourly chart, basically this is the exact same chart uh, on a different platform uh, with annotations. So most recently, into Friday, we saw the Turkish lira collapse 20% and Trump battling out Turkey uh, overnight. As you can see, the market closed the prior day. Um, you know, it, it basically dropped like 10 minutes into the close and then continued to to drop down into Friday. Uh, and it wasn't until the, like the last hour of Friday that it rebounded. Um, and so let's make sense of this, right? So basically, you know, for the, the weekend, uh, you know, the, the week started on, let's see, the 5th, 5th, August 5th was that Sunday. So it was the 6th that was that Monday. And so mo basically we, we started off the week positive, went up, not much happened. We, we hovered around 2850 to 2860 for pretty much the entire day that day, the 7th, the entire, the entire day of the 8th, almost the entire day of the 9th. And it almost looked like we were going to head out higher, but it looks like what happened was this was an A, B, C wave, right? So that C wave, uh, you know, I was expecting somewhere around 28.35, 28.40, went as low as 28.27 or 26 actually. And actually that makes sense. You look back here, this was prior resistance here uh, at 28.28.5. And so it makes sense that 28.26 serves as support. And uh, so this was also kind of like a gap rally, and so basically filled that gap down. Um, so retested it one more time, and uh, th so that was the news here. The last rally news was when um, you know Trump, China said they're going to retaliate, and then Trump says he's going to. It's kind of like China like calls on your on your raise, and then you uh, the United States like raises further again in the next round. And the market likes that. Um, here, Turkish collapse, blah, 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 and it looks like the market, at least in the last hour, is showing some signs of strength, strength there. Uh, you could see that happen in the NASDAQ as well. So that was the S&P 500 futures. Uh, markets in the NASDAQ pulled back. Uh, markets in uh, the, the Russell uh, pulled back on that. Um, though it did have a strong uh, rally for most of the day on, on Friday. And then, of course, the Dow had the, the most impact. Uh, and it looks like it pulled back quite significantly um, to, towards the afternoon of Friday. And so that was mo most of the action actually happened on Thursday and Friday. So the, the question is, when it pulls back here, what? how do you make sense of it? So if you look at the S&P 500, uh, we have all these earnings things, and it looks like it pulled back a little bit. And then we have the uh, tariffs that are well received by the market, uh, Turkish collapse, and it looks like we could be heading higher from this pullback. So this, I would, I would view this pullback as a, as a potential buying opportunity. And uh, the question is though, there is a, there is a potential double top. So if you zoom out here, if you zoom out here, you'll notice we had those January or February highs, uh, was, uh, end of January highs, right after the State of the Union address, or I think it was maybe just before when it's one of them uh, and when when the president makes a speech it makes it seem like everything is doing fine and then like shortly afterwards plummet right so the question is I don't think you know right now at 2835 I don't I, I think we're gonna move towards this area but I don't think we're gonna uh, bust right through it uh, if anything we're gonna have to uh, as this video I'm gonna show you uh, contend with it right so if we move in this direction we're gonna even if we exceeded by a little bit, that would not be a buying opportunity. Some people would be like, "Oh, that's a breakout." That's, I would say, that's not. And if anything, th this resistance would result in a pullback. I would say, uh, just guessing based on the chart, back to this twenty-eight, twenty-five region, or I think more, more, more likely to this twenty-seven, ninety-five region. All right. So, just know that that. Uh, I would not be buying it because a potential downfall, downside could be 
in this region or maybe in this 28 10 28 you know 15 region right so I, I think right now there is room to the upside um, especially because we have a, a wave thrust up plus a pullback and um, you know typically you're not going to see like uh, you know it, it's already had three potential uh, days of, uh, of of red candles so it would make sense that we, we consolidate and attempt to move in this direction but I would not uh, buy in this upper region 2880 um, so uh, here's a video that uh, I think it's worth sharing uh, Carter Thomas is technical analysis guy um, uh, he shares like 10 charts uh, and uh, just take a listen here they're also double bottoms they're double tops I want to talk about what a double top is and uh, where we are now in relation to a prior high in the market but some classic examples so here's the Dow Jones transportation average um, and the plunge that took place in 09 and this recovery in 2011 right back to former highs and what we know what happened from there is the following you can it see was a, a support double top and right you got this and it goes right back perfect failure at the high area. and a really big wipeout now if so I were to go on to right another here. example just to make a point this is the S&P we all lived through this of course this was the 2000 peak and the 2007 peak and if we put in the lines what we know is we failed right at the former high let's keep going just to be agnostic what about uh, Sam Adams it rose just as of two weeks ago to its high reported earnings and what it did on its earnings was the following it plunged dropped in gap and of course the principle was that it got back to a difficult level so let's keep going and let's talk about the most epic high of all time the hunt brothers tried to corner the market and they did effectively until the government uh, changed the margin requirements on them and put them out of business and silver got exactly back to that high and what we know is it failed so I want to talk about the S&P. There are minor double tops, intermediate, and major. If we look at the S&P, if it's a major double top like silver over many years, has major implications. This is not a major double top. Let's put in the lines. It's an intermediate top, which is to say we know we were here in late January. We're now here in early August. And even if you don't decline, the principle is this. Before you can exceed a former high, you have to contend with it. And what that means in principle is either we back and fill or we back away. Neither is a bad thing, but that's what happens when you first approach a prior high. You want to invite I, him I over? Think, I, there's a lot. Yeah. Right, so that was, you know, that was a good video uh, showing basically that we're going to try to contend with the 2880, 2885 region. And at that point, if we were to fall, which I would expect to, it would fall probably to 2860. And then maybe rebound and hit some resistance, and then maybe from there, drop down to 28, 20, 28, 27, but, you know, back to this area, or potentially lower into this region. But if it comes down to 27.95, that would be a very good buying opportunity. So right now, I think uh, the possibilities are are favorable for some upside. You know, we are, we're end of August typically. Um, low low volume and volume starts to pick up more in September and October and that there tend to be more volatility in that time period though not necessarily always the case and so I would guess if that were to be the case we could that would be what happens in the S&P if we have the Nasdaq here well you know what would happen well we, we actually went higher than Nasdaq is much more bullish so the, the January highs were way back here and we're already well above it so it looks like if we were to rally to some high, we pull back. I would say the pullback would bring us potentially to 73.20. All right, so that would be kind of like your next buying opportunity if we were to get there. Uh, Russell, uh, this one's a little bit more messy, but it looks like we may try to uh, move in this direction, then pull back uh, probably into this. 1675 region before moving back up. Uh, the Dow, if we were to do that, the next resistance, this is not as strong as the S&P or NASDAQ. So I would imagine we'd probably try to struggle somewhere in this region. Or if for whatever reason we get up to this, this area, then that would be a sell. So this would be definitely a sell if it gets in the area. And uh, more likely I'd say it gets to 2580, 840 pulls back 
where would it pull back to? Probably, it probably pulled back to around twenty-five thousand, right? So, so that's those are the indices. Apple still hovering around the trillion dollar mark. Amazon, you know, you know, busting way out, uh, really strong. <laughs> Tesla, uh, oh, got that uh, the the uh, Musk tweaked that uh, said he got he secured funding at four twenty. Uh, right now that's yet to be confirmed. And actually, if we go to uh, CNBC actually just a few hours ago, they uh, they posted. Uh, let, me, let me find it. All right, so I think this is it. The uh, six hours ago, Saudi Arabia's uh, public investment funds (PIF) uh, shows no interest has or has shown no interest. So they own uh, a large, a large uh, stake in uh, in Tesla. But the headline reads uh, has shown no interest in bankrolling his their, the Tesla buyout, uh, his proposed seventy-two billion dollar deal. Uh, let's see. So right here, uh, however, a source who is familiar with their strategy said it was not currently getting involved in any funding process. Uh, there's also some some talk about how they have to uh, seek guidance from SoftBank, and people contacted SoftBank and they said they're not currently pursuing a deal um, since they already invested in a rival GM Cruise earlier this year. And so it looks like, I mean, is is it possible that that Elon Musk is in a uh, Deep financial uh, or, or legal trouble because they're they're suing him for basically manipulating stock price. Uh, he he put out a tweet uh, at this point and so basically pushed it up. This remember this was earnings over here and this pushed it up. So the question is, uh, if it goes private, then the price would trend towards 420. If he's lying, well, in a way they reported earnings uh, you know hovered in this area. So I, I would imagine you just get stuck back in this area if that that were the case. Uh, but that's Tesla, Netflix. Uh, you know, plunged on earnings, recovered, but then, you know, had that plunge. So basically, I see this as a one, two, three, four, five, and this potentially as a one, two. And uh, I would say if this support region in this three forty three region, where it came, it was right after the earnings. If this can hold, then maybe it could start to muster some strength back up. Microsoft. Uh, Rally towards the high, pulled back, still strong. Facebook, um, it had that strength pulled back into this support region, which was previously resistance. And so I would imagine maybe after a couple of days, then it could start resuming that that pullback. I think this was a great opportunity if you had bought any calls to have sold on this on this uh, pop. Uh, so yeah, those are the the major uh, major stocks. And uh, lastly, I'll go over Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin had that one, two, three, four, five pattern, uh, followed by an ABC pattern. AB one, two, three, four, five. I thought this area, seventy one hundred to sixty eight hundred, would hold, but for whatever reason, it had it extended. Right. So the extension can can go. You know, it, it the, the thing is the fifty eight hundred level did hold. We did break the low of the the previous wave two, um, and usually. Like this is kind of like this area is kind of like a last resort, uh, and this this was an extension. So this is not it's not very bullish, but it's like it's barely holding on. Um, so uh, if you look at Ethereum, so you look at Ethereum zoomed out, it actually made a new low, right? So. You know, does that low low of like basically three hundred five make sense? Well, in a way, in a way, it does. Look at look at where this rally started from. Back in uh, you know, back in uh, November, you know, just before Thanksgiving last year, it was hovering around this three hundred five area, and then it wasn't until people talked about it over Thanksgiving that it suddenly surged. So, re markets like to retest breakout zones. So this was the beginning of a breakout zone, and it looks like market retested that area. So it, it is, you know, it could make sense in that in that regard. Now with Bitcoin, you zoomed out that much. You know, November, right? So this was that previous breakout zone, this area, fifty five hundred, fifty eight hundred. 
you could potentially say yeah five thousand uh, it's it's possible that we could also retest that area um how however if if I could make sense of this wave count one two three a b c four and then a five the question is is this five finished well it's one two three four five I don't know exactly the structure but somewhere in this region should hold uh, but so it's just that this if this were a wave two job let's say this is wave one two three four five wave one and this is wave two this wave two is a, a bit on the deep side so it usually could mean that that's not I'm wrong but wave two is at the same time or like the the most quickest and um, deepest drops so if you think of uh, the 1987 stock market crash that that was a wave two crash but of course you realize that the wave three happened which was like the 1990s internet boom right so this could be a wave two it's a little bit stronger than I expected um, but that's one way you could read it so the ethereum drop um, could make sense because we're retesting the the, the breakout zone um, and if you look at some other coins Neo, well, Neo is for whatever reason really, really weak. Um, yeah, this chart does not look good. Litecoin, it's yeah, it's retesting the the breakout zone in this region, this this region here, basically fifty to sixty five to seventy. That's uh, that's re retesting it. Um, so that's that's how to make sense of it. These these markets move so crazily that it's, it's very hard to actually. Um, Trade it perfectly. I would say the best best bet is the dollar cost average, in, in these kind of things. Uh, so that's the analysis for uh, Bitcoin Ethereum. And earlier we talked about the the main indices, Nasdaq, S and P five hundred, and it looks like we could be retesting that high of twenty eight eighty eighty five. From there, I would not be a buyer. Instead, I would be a seller, and look for any dips back towards twenty eight hundred. Um, 2795 as an ideal scenario. All right, so that's it. I'll see you guys next time.